Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna do a uh, live gameplay here of the Focke-Wulf 190A8, my favorite. Playing in the game, my favorite premium in the game. No, it's it's not good, but uh, but I love it. And I tried something recently to do something a little different with it. We saw the uh, premium F4 was coming out. There were some comments about how there's not gonna be another ground attack premium <clears throat> and about how you know it might be something that was used more for ground attack than anything else. And, uh, of course, we learned a day later when the update happened that was not really the case. But um, I had already been thinking in that direction because I wondered, I always get to thinking in a plane like this, it's not necessarily good. What were the devs thinking? I mean, this thing had a 2,200 meter optimal altitude. You know, it was a good plane uh, at 1.x, and it's not now. It's like, okay, well, what what was the what was the goal here <laughs> did we think it was going to be good and if so what were we thinking and the only thing i could come up with is that you know the devs had thought that maybe this would be um, a sort of ground attack leaning plane and i come up with that because if you think about this tier for for ground attack for germans of the german line it's the Messerschmitt 265 right which has a very similar cannon setup to this um and it doesn't necessarily rely on the bombs right it, it relies on um, the guns more so, like many of the German ground attack aircraft do. And so I thought, well, shoot, maybe maybe I should play this as a more of a ground attacker than I am, you know, a multi-role. I'm trying to make it what it was in 1.x, which was, you know, a, an air-to-air -air fighter, you know, that could also do bombs. Maybe it's a ground pounder that can also sometimes fight in the air. So, so I've completely redone the equipment setup, and I'll show you after the match uh, what I've got going on with it. Um, but I do think it's interesting because in a lot of ways it is very similar on paper to that 265 um, as you're playing it. I'm gonna miss that one. I have to. Oh, that yak is a little scary, isn't it? I need to get this kill first, though. And probably this one because we really need those capture points to go away, right? Here's a trick, by the way. I've got the 20s, which are 800 meters, uh, slave to a separate button so that I can go ahead and be whittling away some HP before we get into the 630 meter range. I am running long barrels on this uh, for a lot of different reasons, and that's one of them. Okay, buddy. Uh, let's see if we can get this yak out. Stupid ADA is going to be the death of me, isn't he? There we go. What? We're in uh, take on the uh, rocket base over there, at least pass through. We've got an IL-10 and a Spit-5 on our turn team against a Ki-88 and a P-47 and an IL-2. So uh, nothing too funky. I'm not sure what Stone is doing other than, I guess maybe the f 190s locked on him. That's often the really... It's terrible when you're in ground attackers. But that is one of the things this thing has as an advantage over ground attack, I guess you could say, is that I do have some wiggle room in how I deal with deal with the enemy. So, all right, let's put some uh, put some hurt on this area here. Actually, we're gonna watch. This is what I'm talking about. We often get ignored as this plane, and um, I'm convinced that's why, because people know it's not very good, right? Look, it's the P-47. Which is a tank. And uh, this is going to be an interesting fight. I have a feeling it's going to be over when their other plane uh, comes to uh, bust me up. Right, I don't think it's going to be P-47 that gets me. I think it's probably going to be one of these uh, others. Because the P-47 I can eventually beat out. But I'm also dealing with, you know, a lot of crap from these heavies above me. Yeah, I knew we'd, I knew we'd reverse him eventually, right? I should, probably should have held on to my... Um... Yeah, now he's completely off of me. He's doing what he can do, but he ain't going to be here very long with these 30s working on him. Yep, and that'll flip it for us. And also deal with all those pesky guys over there chasing around us. Uh, we'll head up the airfield next. And my boost cooler will be back in a second. Let me 
Make some money. Take care of him, please. Uh, where are we at? Three to one. Jeez. All right. Let's see what we can do to get over here. Uh, so, uh, so far I've noticed this week um, some interesting up and down battles. You know, once I've swapped the gear out and, and played it differently. Um, I had a really, really solid 16,000 point battle, captured six sectors, dropped a bunch of planes, um, and that was a 2v2, so it wasn't like just, you know, me playing myself or something. Um, see, oh, we're getting ignored. Like, <laughs> he can easily beat me right now, but he won't do it because I, I'm not a threat in some Right, in some sense, um, but uh, anyway, so, um, you know, I've had some really good games, as I mentioned, but I've also had some really games where I really struggled as well. I do think that this helped kind of with that minimum game, like, um, you know, I haven't really had a, a terrible game in it, even games have been over fast, I've been able to contribute quite a bit, and um, it's been helpful. So, you know, and, and this one, you know, I don't know that we're going to win. Um, RAL-10 is, is struggling, and uh, the other guys are, are doing pretty well here. But uh, but we'll give it a shot and uh, see what we can come up with. Somebody get on him. Ah, oh, that's the IL-2. Okay, good. So we're going to go get him. Uh, we can play a little defensive, and that's, that is the other nice thing about this setup when you're not worried about speed or maneuverability. You know, the goal is just get stuff done, right? And that also includes doing some defending, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Hopefully I can catch this guy. You know what, let's go after this one because he's coming towards us. There we go. That probably saved our bacon right there. Okay, it's the P-47 again. Uh, only this time Reaper's on, it, on him, so there we go. And this one's the K-88, Key-88, so. This is uh, this is fun playing with other people. Like that time, I think it was the bot that got him, though. But um, you notice I've got a huge hit point pool, right? Oh, don't don't die now. Don't don't don't. Okay, good. Um, huge hit point pool, and that's on purpose, right? I've put protective gear on this. Again, I'm flying it like a ground attacker. It just also happens to have a 1,400 meter maximum altitude, and you know uh, can push the tempo a little bit. So. Um, all right, so the P-47 and the Key-88 are out now. Um, we already lose the rocket plane. Oh, we did. Okay. Let's get that one back. Uh, we are up. So if we can drop this, uh, we should be in good shape. I'm going to go after uh, the AA guns because those can be a real pain. Oh, that stupid tower is in the way. All right. You here. So much AA. I forget how much flack is on this freaking. I may I may die to AA here. Unfortunately, even with my uh, buffed HP. Okay, please let that be enough. Nope. All right. Fortunately, it went after somebody else or something else. Let's soften these up a little bit. And you got these big 30s on here with a great overheat time on them. So. You know, why not put up the time bunker uh, to work bunker busting things, right? Uh, might as well uh, get something uh, get something out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and now the A is taken care of. I'm going to climb up here and see if I can get this. Uh, oh, he's tip over. No, okay. Uh, go after the air defense aircraft, which you know I couldn't necessarily do with a ground stacker, and that's kind of just an added bonus in this role. Let's get the, uh, there we go. I am 
almost out of hit points. Need to get down low where the... Uh... All right, I got a bomb back. Let's go pop something. Let's go pop some more AA. Yes, it is, Mr. Voice Guy. Yes, it is. All right, so we just need 20. Oh, Lord, their bots have been all over the map doing this, haven't they? Okay, why is that not... Uh, oh, Lord. Okay, I'm going to lose because I can't flip this dang zone in time. And all of my bots... Apparently, my bots were not good. I don't... What the heck, man? Okay, right, we gotta flip something else in a hurry, I guess. Uh, I don't think I have time. I don't think I have time. I mean, as you can see, this battle was not for lack of us trying. Holy smokes. Um, but it really does seem to have... Uh, we're gonna lose this, so I'm just gonna go for our personal points if I can. Oh, is he gonna come over and play? No, probably not. So, um... Yeah. Uh, decent game, right? I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty pretty crazy. Um, yeah, you can kind of uh, eke out a nice nice existence with a, a generally not good plane, I guess. Um, you know, just by shifting the focus a little bit and how you think about flying it, and of course also um, by dealing with you know, slightly different um, gear loadout. And if you stick around for a minute, I'll show you why I think that's important and, and why it doesn't make much of a difference to do anything other than that on this plane, is, which is what I eventually figured out after after a lot of time flying it. Now, of course, we're going to crash now that I'm recording. Don't crash, Mr. Client. Come back to me. Maybe? It's thinking about it. So uh, the, the Focke-Wulf 190A8 at Tier 7 doesn't get navigational equipment, doesn't get a G-suit, right? Uh, so that limits some of your options and it only has four equipment slots and they are spread out evenly You've got guns. You've got cockpit airframe and engine. So one on each. So yeah, this is you know Got some personal points there Aerial targets seven of those were aircraft um, Did a lot of damage to ground targets and a decent amount of damage to aerial targets as well, right? So like I said, we you know, five sectors captured. We certainly did our part in this battle, right? Um, it's just um, yeah, one of the things I, I've mentioned before, but look, you know, normally the winning team is the team where the players capture the most sectors. Not always, but many times. So I did five, six, seven. So we had seven. Seven total among our players. How many did they have? One, two, four. <laughs> so uh, that just tells you uh, the bots were a little squirrely in this match because there's no way we should have lost that, right, just with the amount of output. And even then, I mean, these guys, you know, didn't end up doing terribly bad. Um, so they got some they got some points in there. They captured some sectors, right? So, But uh, anyway, let's look at the gear, gear set up really fast. So um, you've only got four here. So, so what are you going to do? Are, are you going to make this thing a speed demon? You can't. Um, its top speed is like 630 stock, I think, something like that. Um, even if you make, you know, do a boost here, you're not going to get there. One, because this this engine is such a low horsepower engine, uh, and this is such a heavy plane, your, your thrust is unbelievably low. So um, stock, without any gear, this plane struggles to hit its top speed outside of a dive, right? So the boost speed is just not realistic. Um, so you can build for cruise speed, which is normally what you would do in a multi-roll anyway, um, get you around the map at a decent clip, you know, flip some zones, that sort of thing. And I have done that here. I've got the uprated engine instead of the polish, again, because of the extra thrust. The uprated engine, of course, uh, incre increases acceleration without boost, which is something you need along with the cruise speed. And I've got it prepped for cruise speed, maximum speed, boost speed. Um, and, uh, you know, it's resistance to fire, but this thing has great resistance. It's actually the second beefiest multi-roll at the tier. Um, well, second only to the jug. And as you can see there, I, you know, we, we can handle the jug. Our roll rate... Our rudder control allows us to outfight him. So, you know, I'm not super worried about that. 
Um, so, you know, I can, and I can take some damage, right, as, as I trail people along. Um, and then, um, you know, what are you going to do on guns? I do long barrels. This is an accordion setup, as VBAT used to call it. You know, the 20s are actually pretty long range, and I've got them slaved to a different key, so I can go ahead and do some long range shooting if I need to. But the 30s are 576, and the 13 MGs are 500. So, you know, putting that extra oomph on the long, with the long barrels is great. Um, and not only that, but you can keep some DPS. So in this case, I've got plus 15% crit damage, and I've got plus 5% damage, period. So just plus 5% damage boost across the board, which is a DPS boost, and that's fantastic. And I've got the extra range, also fantastic. And I don't lose any accuracy, although I have thought about swapping this and putting, you know, dropping the 5% crit for the extra accuracy just to give it a little bit of oomph. But uh, since I'm not running a gun sight, which leads me to the last two pieces of equipment, you also can't build this to turn because your turn time sucks. Um, you know, I, the only thing I have in here, I think, that takes up a little bit of turn time, turn, uh, not even this. So, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything that's taking up turn. So this is the stock turn is 13.3. You can't build that out very well. You might can get it down to 12, and then what are you out turning? You're not out turning light fighters. You can out turn heavies, but I can already out turn heavies for the most part. You know, the U.S. heavies, some of the U.S. heavies I might struggle a little bit with, but, um, you, know, you can't build this thing for that either. So, so what are you going to do? You go for hybrid, and then you just, you know, that's which is what I did before, and then you're struggling to do anything. Well, you're a little faster and a little more maneuverable, but it doesn't really help you a whole lot. But this, this helps you. Um, so I've got uh, reinforced airframe. I've got, you know, beefy extra HP. I've got resistance to fire to offset what's going on with the upgraded engine, and then I have more HP. Just beef it up, right? And I'm actually going to swap the critical resistance on the wings. I don't necessarily think I need that. Um, and, you know, tolerance to A guns or having back a little of your roll, either one of those might be more helpful. So I may eventually swap that. Um, and then here the reinforced cockpit, again, just for the extra HP and the extra tolerance from fire, which I'll eventually switch from the 5% to the 10% when I've got some extra resources, um, which will completely offset the um, engine fires. But because of this, because of the extra beef, you know, look what we're dealing with, uh, 475 hit points. Although in game, if you saw it was 466, there's some kind of bug going on. I need to do a support ticket and see what's up with that. But resistances are good even here. And, and once I get the tire fire stuff, you know, respect, this will go up even higher. So solid resistances, you know, nice beefy hit point pool for tier 7 is wonderful. Um, I'm running the stock kind of standard you know, consumables. And then also this, again, just overcome the weaker engine extra thrust and extra cruise speed. If you want, you can slap the uh, chrome camo on here and get this up to 500, I think it is. Um, I prefer the extra resistance at this point. Again, I'm not trying to be a speed king. Uh, you just It just doesn't necessarily help work a whole lot, but you can get it up there. Uh, these camos are great, by the way. The parade camo is my favorite. But uh, all of these camos on this one, this, was, this is a, just a well done, all these historical camouflages on it. Good stuff, tasty. I wish we had more of that. Uh, pilot skills, I had an extra pilot, uh, so eight points. So um, aerodynamics, um, again, to get the speed up where it needed to be, just that little bit extra. Um, and then protection expert, even more HP and resistance, right? And then a little bit more accuracy on the guns, since I don't have a gun sight. And then boost on the bomb as well. Because you can't get the bomb back any quicker, you might as well make it more powerful. Um, and at tier 7 matches, you know, this is pretty good. You saw it pretty, pretty good damage on the ground, and it comes back really fast. So this, is, I think, is a good setup. I think I'm probably going to keep this uh, the way it is. Um, I might make some tweaks to the substats, make calibrate up some stuff, although I think my long guns are already maxed out, if I remember right. Oh, no, they're not. Okay, so I'll, I'll work on uh, maxing those out at some point. Um, but yeah, th this, this has been a better way to fly this, I think, anyway. But I wanted to ask all of you guys for this video. Um, it, this is not a great plane. We acknowledge that, right? Everybody knows that. How do you make it palatable? Do you have it? Do you fly it? Uh, what would you do? What would your idea be for, for making this, you know, um, a palatable plane, a flyable plane for you? Um, and if you don't have any ideas, you know, tell me what you think about mine, flying this more with that ground attack role in mind. Um, because again, I just, you know, unless you've got the initiative, unless you're generating or on the offensive for the attack and using these guns to one pass someone, you know, if you're caught on the defensive, I'm not sure there's any gear setup that's going to save you. So you might as well go for that survivability. And, and there is actually a parallel for this. So those of you who have the F-84F, the tier 10 US multi-role, usually people build it out with protections as well, um, just to get that extra beef on it. And 
you know, same sort of thing. It's sort of moderate speed, um, you know, moderate firepower, but really it takes a beating. <laughs> so it's, a, you know, it really gives it the one thing it's lacking here. You know, we're sort of playing into that one strength we have, which is that um, extra amount of hit points and resistance and, and the big guns. So anyway, let me know what you think. Um, again, it is my favorite. I know I'm a glutton for punishment, but this is what I do. I love taking planes that are not good, not great, not meta, and trying to make them flyable, useful, um, and, and get some good contributions. And, you know, for what it's worth, it may not have been a win, but this was a dang close game. And boy, did we contribute some stuff to it. I, I, I can't be upset at that at all, right? Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a fun match for me. I'll, I'll take that flying a plane like this and, um, and being able to contribute any day of the week. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. If I'm crazy, if you have some ideas, if you think I've made the right move here, or you think there's one that's different that I should be trying, good luck on the Battle of Coral Sea missions this weekend. Pick up the Kerr first and this Iron Maiden Spitfire. What a, what a duo to have on sale right now when you get a chance. And um, uh, I will hopefully see you in the skies over the weekend. Good luck and good hunting.